Wait for it. Wait for it. Yeah. Two and a half million copies of Dragon's Dogma 2 have been sold. Now, I don't know about you, but for a game that is so divisive, let's say, that's pretty damn impressive, and I couldn't be happier. But, what does it mean? I know, I know you might be thinking it means two and a half million copies of Souls. You, you moron, you just, you just said that. And while true, there's more to this tale, or at least there very much could be, because the Capcom of today is very different from the Capcom of 12 years ago, when the first game reared its head. So, I uh, first and foremost want to say that for me, personally, I think Dragon's Dogma 2 is phenomenal. It is unlike anything else I have ever played. I am not ignorant to its issues, and it certainly does have them. I uh, think the difficulty of the game is a problem, mainly because it leads to enemy variety seeming like it's really little, when it's not. Objectively, there is the same amount of enemies in Dragon's Dogma 2 as there is original Dragon's Dogma, minus Dark Arisen. Though, granted, spread over a much larger map, so you do feel it more, but when everything just gets kind of annihilated with basic abilities without any thought, the differences and true, like, actual incredible depth of enemy movesets, behaviors, and dynamic fights you can have sort of gets lost. I think the story has a little bit of a petering out towards the end somewhat randomly, though it is saved by the true endgame, but a lot of people aren't realizing that exists or unlocking it, so a lot of threads go unanswered and it does feel weird. I think more unique gear and weapons that can only be acquired by exploring would also go along long way versus buying everything in a shop. There's a couple things that I could certainly keep going and explore and dive into, but the point is, uh, Dragon's Dogma, the whole is so much greater than the sum of its parts, and it offers an experience and feeling that nothing else really does. The physical weight of the combat that gives such impact to both the positive things that you do and the negative things that happen to you. The true put you in the world immersion of how it is explored, regardless of what you feel about fast travel not fast travel, yada yada, I really do feel like it draws you in in a really meaningful way. And bottom line, just pure vibe, let's call it. I just like being in the world of Dragon's Dogma 2. It's just satisfying. It feels special. Like, so few games actually kind of do that to me, where I just load in and I'm running around and I just really like that I am there. Even if I'm not doing anything in particular, it just feels sort of really satisfying to exist in it. And I feel like it's really hard for an RPG to achieve that. I really like the vocations. I think there's a lot of cool things that you can do, even if, again, some of them are too strong. And basically, all of this is to say that Dragon's Dogma 2, for me, is in my top 5 RPGs of all time, and probably top 15 games of all time. And that's really good. And seeing it sell 2.5 million copies gives me a lot of hope. But hope for what? Well... For more, of course, because I think essentially everything I just talked about and the reason I did talk about the few things that I do have, let's say, perhaps issues with, can be resolved in a meaningful way with more content. Because the base bedrock foundation of this world and this game is superb. The environment to the combat to the breathingness of it, it is there. So with more to do, more to fight, more to see, and more difficulty, suddenly, yeah, that is something incredible. And it's not just a case of, oh, Dragon's Dogma 2 needs its Bitter Black Isle, and there we go. Because Bitter Black Isle was wonderful. If you don't know, it was in Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen. You'd go there in the post-game, have to battle through ridiculously challenging dungeon to get to the final boss, and then you could do it again for an even harder version of that final boss. And it was almost roguelike -y in a little bit of a sense. Not quite, but it, it kind of felt like that. It was repeatable and conquerable, and it felt good 
good to do so, but it was very contained. It was a dungeon that you go through. It felt like a, a Dark Souls level, like a legacy dungeon in Elden Ring, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I think in Dragon's Dogma 2, it probably needs to be of larger scope. But nothing was ever going to happen without it being successful. I uh, think adding the kind of design decisions they've done for the Unmold world just to a general large expansion of stuff would be incredible, because I think the Unmold world is by far and away the best part of the entire game, and it's an optional post-game that you can completely miss. It has such a cool idea and cool take, and look, I'll say it, I prefer the Unmold world to the Everfall. I know that might get me crucified by a lot of Dragon's Dogma original vets, but I do. I think it is wonderful. Having the map transformed with new unique bosses and stories to play out, it just really expands on everything in such a meaningful way, and hell, if you do it at the right level, even has a little bit of difficulty, which feels great. So to me, I think the idea of getting like a whole other land, like we have Vermin, we have Batal, and then we have something that we can now actually go to and explore storylines and challenges there. But that said, I don't think the way or even that it's likely to get Dragon's Dogma 2 Dark Arisen or whatever it would be called, a kind of re-released expanded definitive version, because as I said at the start, the Capcom of today is not the Capcom of 12 years ago, as obvious as a statement that might be. And I think the Monster Hunter model that has now become standard is the way to look and the way to pay forward for Dragon's Dogma 2. It has done well enough, sold enough copies, had enough positivity, overall I think think if you're looking outside of certain echo chambers to warrant support and it is the support that Monster Hunter World, Iceborne Rise, and Sunbreak got in the form of regular title updates that inject a new monster or monsters, some new stuff to do, some new armor to make, that keeps you coming back. If every two, three months for like the next year, Dragon's Dogma 2 got a chunk update that added some new big bosses to fight, a new section of quests to do, some new gear to find, you'd eventually reach the point where after all of them have come in, that we have this amazing much more complete package that addresses a lot of the issues while building on the excellent base of the game. And that's, I think, something that's entirely viable. It's also entirely viable, I think, to go the Monster Hunter route that has existed longer in that having a just expansion level increase, like the Iceborne to World, the Sunbreak to Rise. If we had Dragon's Dogma 2 and then we got its Dragon's Dogma 2 big version, right, where everything takes a step up, we get a full new section continent of the map, and it definitely just feels like a extra 33% of game has tacked on and everything's turned up to 11, that might be exactly the way to go when it comes to something like this. We add new vocations, new uh, mixes, and increase the variety there, and we also use it as an excuse to inject a whole new load of challenging boss enemies, which I think would be deeply appreciated and go the long way. I think ultimately uh, this sales report, and clearly it has been seen as a smash success on Capcom's side, is a signal that Dragon's Dogma 2 both needs and likely will get support. Because they'd be silly not to, it's sort of become expected. Even something like Exoprimal, which is a lovely, charming, silly dinosaur shooter and I adore it, has not had anywhere near the success of now Dragon's Dogma 2, really. It's, it's kind of gone under the radar and it's a shame, but that's still getting title updates with new bosses to fight and so on, new content to enjoy regularly, and it does create these uh, little upticks in how players approach it and for how long they do so. I really think that is something that would would really tip Dragon's Dogma 2 over the edge. I think it would make a lot of people that are on the fence fully commit, and I think it would make a lot of people who are using the phrase, and I can totally understand this, Dragon's Dogma 2 is the best 7 out of 10 game they've ever played. And I think everyone who's saying that would suddenly actually tip over into, yeah, this is a 9.5, 10 out of 10, game a year contender, okay, I get it now, when we have just that, that pinnacle added on, because I think that's ultimately what is missing, a full-on, proper, challenging scope with some actual rewards to find and some storylines to enjoy while doing so. So that's kind of where I'm at. 
but I think it's kind of what Dragon's Dogma 2 needs, and I think now, thanks to this report, I've got the perfect reason to actually talk about it, because it is viable. Seeing those sales numbers and Capcom's track record with recent games and how they handle post-game content, it would not surprise me if Title Update 1 or the Iceborne equivalent for Dragon's Dogma 2 is already keenly in the works and greenlit, and that's very, very exciting. Let me know what you guys think, though, of course, and like if you enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell. Until we meet again, consider supporting the future channel on Patreon down below. A good bye. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice to reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is, uh, goodbye.